Do you know all of the obstacles that you need to overcome to successfully get your new product to market? There are countless obstacles that you need to surpass in order to bring a new product to market. This is especially true for physical electronic products. Your best chance of being able to make it past these obstacles is to know about them well in advance. By knowing about them, you can properly plan ahead, thus drastically improving your odds of overcoming them. Understanding all of the major obstacles well in advance will also significantly reduce the time it will take you to get your product to market. Bringing a new product to market is simply not something that can be done by the seat of your pants. You can't just make up your strategy as you go and you need to plan ahead for each of the five obstacles I'm about to share with you. The first major obstacle in achieving market domination for your product is the development of a production quality prototype, which is essential for manufacturing and selling the product to the masses. This prototype is similar to the final product that will be manufactured at scale. Unlike a proof of concept prototype, which is typically built using an Arduino Raspberry Pi or an, another development kit. POC or proof of concept prototypes are only useful for proving the basic product concept. Creating a production quality prototype requires advanced engineering skills such as custom designed printed circuit boards and custom designed plastic enclosures. Unless you are an engineer with a very broad set of technical skills, it's going to be challenging for you to fully design the product yourself. This means that most will need to outsource at least some of the development to experienced engineers and this can be quite expensive. Unfortunately, crowdfunding is generally not a good funding option for this early development. In most cases, a production quality prototype is gonna be necessary before initiating a crowdfunding campaign. And crowdfunding is best suited for funding the scaling and inventory cost and not your early development cost. Now this leaves entrepreneurs to either fund the development themselves raise money from friends and family, or seek early stage professional investors. The second major obstacle that we're gonna look at is scaling to mass manufacturing. Scaling to mass manufacturing is one of the biggest obstacles to overcome, both technically and financially. Most entrepreneurs severely underestimate the complexity and cost associated with going from the prototype stage to the mass manufacturing stage. You can realistically expect to spend six to 12 months setting up manufacturing, and this may be longer, especially if you're manufacturing in Asia. It will be a huge benefit to you if you design your product from the beginning with manufacturing in mind. This is called Design for Manufacturing, or DFM, and it involves making your product as easy to mass manufacture as possible. The plastic parts of your product will require the most attention because the injection molding technology used for production is drastically different than the 3D printing technology used for prototypes. With 3D printing, you can create pretty much anything you can dream up with, with few limits on the shape. Injection molded plastic, on the other hand, has strict design rules that must be closely followed. It's a very restrictive technology that's best dealt with as early as possible. Be sure you work with someone that actually has experience designing for injection molding. It can be challenging and expensive to make any product changes once you have moved to injection molded plastic technology. For one thing, once a mold is machined, you can only subtract metal from it. You can't add metal to it. So this means just the opposite for your part. It means you can add plastic to your design but you cannot remove plastic once the molds are machined. Also, be prepared for the high cost of these injection molds, especially those designed for exceptionally high production volumes. High volume production molds can easily cost ten dollars to $50,000 each, and since most products will require several molds, you can see how the cost can get quite expensive. This is why I recommend that you work out all of the kinks in your manufacturing domestically. You can begin with lower cost molds made out of softer metals like aluminum, which can be purchased for a couple thousand dollars each. One way to delay paying for these molds is to arrange payment terms with your manufacturer. They may be willing to amortize the mold cost over your first few production runs. For example, if your production molds cost $20,000, 
then the manufacturer may be willing to fund these molds in exchange for $1 extra on the first 20,000 units. Obstacle number three is the certification of the electronics. Any type of new electronic product will need to obtain certain electrical certifications in order to be sold on the market. The certifications required will depend on your product and where it will be sold. In the US, you will definitely require FCC certification and other countries will have similar certifications to ensure that your product doesn't produce radio waves that interfere with other wireless communication. If your product has any wireless functionality, such as Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, you can drastically reduce your FCC certification costs by using pre-certified modules for the wireless functions instead of using a fully custom wireless circuit. For products with custom wireless circuits, expect to pay over $10,000 for FCC certification, whereas if you use pre-certified wireless modules, or if you don't have any wireless functionality at all, then that cost is gonna drop down to less than $2,000. The other major certification necessary in the US is UL certification. Well, the UL certification is typically only gonna be needed for products that plug directly into your home's AC electrical outlets. Expect to pay over $10,000 for UL certification. You may want to consider bundling an existing AC-DC wall adapter that is already UL certified, so you can entirely avoid this expensive certification. There are various other types of certifications that may be required, such as ROHS, UN38.3, and so on, but these are all relatively low cost and shouldn't represent shouldn't present a serious obstacle to you. The fourth obstacle that you're gonna run into is initially having low profit margins. When you start off manufacturing in small batches, perhaps even domestically, your profit margins are gonna be low. This is true for all products that aren't taking advantage of economies of scale, which just means as your manufacturing volume increases, your production cost per unit decreases. The lower your profit margins, the more challenging it is, it is to grow your company. So having low initial profit margins means it will likely take you longer to ramp up to higher profit margins. This is why it's generally best to start by selling your product direct to consumers on your website. This allows you to maximize your initial profit margin because there are no others like retailers or distributors taking a cut of the profit. While most businesses suffer through an initial period of low profit margins, you will have to eventually make enough money to support yourself and your company. Doing some upfront research will help you along the way. First, you need to accurately estimate your cost of goods sold or just COGS for short and you need to estimate this cost across different levels of production. This will enable you to forecast your profit margins at every production level. Cash flow will ultimately be one of your biggest challenges to scale in your startup, and the lower your profit margins, the more challenging cash flow will be. So it's important you know your manufacturing costs as early as possible so you can plan appropriately. Obstacle number five is marketing and sales. Let me ask you a question. Have you started to build an online audience yet that's interested in your product or product category? Now, if you answered no, then you need to shift your priorities and fast. You need to focus on marketing and building an interested audience simultaneously while developing the product. If you haven't started building an online audience of potential customers, then you need to start right now. This audience is also critical for providing you early feedback on your product. It's always better to develop a new product with the market instead of you developing it for the market based on your assumptions of what they want. A Great deal of entrepreneurs I have worked with over the years are singularly focused on how to develop their product. Their comfort zone is engineering, software development, or other technical aspects of hardware development. For many entrepreneurs, this is the fun part, so it's easy for them to wait far too long to focus on marketing and sales. If you fall into this tech-minded category, or if you really dislike or fear marketing and sales, 
then you should probably try and bring on to your team a co-founder with sales and marketing experience. If you want your product or company to be a huge financial success, then it's critical that you embrace marketing and sales as early as possible. Engineering is of course essential, but marketing and sales is what actually makes the money. If you like this video, be sure to check out this video here to discover 13 insider tips that will help you get your new electronic hardware product to market faster and cheaper.